Imagine living in a desert. Water is scarce, the sun relentless. Every action revolves around finding and saving that precious liquid. Now imagine living on a lush, fertile plain. Food grows almost effortlessly, water flows freely. Would your lives be the same? Probably not. This is the core idea behind environmental determinism. The belief that the environment dictates how humans develop. Think of it as a giant game of Sims, but Earth Edition. The landscape, climate, and resources are the preset rules. They shape how people live, work, and even think. So if you're born in the desert, you might become nomadic herders, while plains dwellers could farm and settle down. Makes sense, right? This theory gained popularity in the early 1900s. Geographers like Ellen Semple argued that cold climates made people tough and hardworking, while tropical heat led to laziness. Historians like Arnold Toynbee believe geographic challenges like mountains or rivers pushed civilizations to innovate and grow. But hold on, is it really that simple? Here's the catch. Environmental determinism is like a one-sided story. It focuses solely on the environment's influence. Forgetting humans are pretty adaptable. We don't just passively accept our surroundings. We interact with them, change them, and even defy them. Desert dwellers build complex irrigation systems, plains people invent advanced farming techniques, and mountain communities develop unique trade routes. We adapt, invent, and overcome, proving we're not just puppets on the environmental stage. So, is environmental determinism totally wrong? Not exactly. The environment undoubtedly plays a significant role. It provides resources, challenges, and opportunities that shape our societies. But it's only one piece of the puzzle. Think of it this way. Imagine a delicious cake. The flour, sugar, and eggs are like the environment essential ingredients. But without the baker's creativity, skills, and recipe, representing human agency, you wouldn't have a cake, just a messy pile of ingredients. This more nuanced approach is called possibilism. It acknowledges the environment's influence, but emphasizes human agency. We're not simply responding, we're actively shaping our world through choices, technologies, and cultural values. For example, consider Japan. Despite being prone to earthquakes and tsunamis, they've become a technological powerhouse. They adapted their environment through building codes, early warning systems, and innovative infrastructure. This shows that while the environment sets limitations, it doesn't dictate our destiny. 